Happy 2019, everybody! Thank God for seeing us through 2018 and bringing us safely to 2019, which is another year that affords us the opportunity of chasing after our dreams. But remember, like I've said repeatedly, nobody succeeds by accident. It had to be on purpose. The same way you can't just wake up and say, wow, I am now a graduate, uh, but I don't know how it happened. Is that possible? No, it's not possible. You will have taken the necessary steps. There will have been deliberate decisions, preparations. It's exactly the same way. And that is why Delight Channel exists. We've been running now for two years. This is the third. And our vision, the vision of this NGO is world transformation, one man at a time, one community at a time. And what we've tried to do, even though our vision is are broken down into two broad areas, which is the human capital development and infrastructural development, we are focused primarily over the last two years more on the human capital development. We've done little bits here and there on the infrastructure development, but we believe that when we are able to help build the human being, then we're in a position to now aggregate everything together and start making difference, start making a difference on the infrastructure development part of things. So, welcome again to 2019. Welcome again to Delight Channel. And the questions we've been asking towards the end of last year up to this point are these three questions. Number one, have you evaluated 2018? Number two, have you identified the gaps? And number three, have you come up with plans specific, measurable, achievable, or, or audacious, realistic, and time-specific uh, targets that you want to chase for 2019? And what do you need to make them happen? Okay? So, whatever we're able to contribute to that journey is why Delay is here. Feel free to check our library. We've got now over a hundred different videos that touch on different things be free to check them and consume them and we do sincerely hope that it will help you on in your journey and if there's any help we could afford we could render to you directly feel free to reach out to us or if there's anything you'd like us to cover specifically feel free to reach out to us we'll be very very glad to do that on this your journey to living your dream so where do we pick it up from this, this week? Exactly where we stopped last week, which is walking through the change management seven-step process that you need to be aware of. Have you watched them? Do you remember what they are? Let me do a quick recap. The first is you must identify what exactly needs to change. Then the second is that you need to evaluate and build a case for that thing that you have identified needs to change. It could be a product, it could be a process, it could be a system, whatever it is, you need to evaluate and build the case. The third would then be to communicate, communicate, communicate. Who are you communicating to? All your stakeholders. You need to know their power interest, interest rating so that you can speak to them appropriately. And then you also need to be aware that in your communication, there are different types of people that will be there. We have identified the active resistor, the passive resistor, the rank and file, and the change agent. Watch past videos to understand exactly who they are and what you need, you need to do. And last week, we then went on to talk about the need for you to have a plan for this change. Don't just deal with it as it comes. Don't just roll with it based on the side it turns up. Be deliberate about it. Then we spoke about execution, monitoring, and managing of that process, okay? Where you are aware of what can go wrong, and as they are showing up, you have a deliberate plan to deal with them and address them. Now, this week, I want to try and cover the last two so that we can learn this seven-point process this week. The sixth process in this journey is celebrate success. Like I said, the human being is the difficult part of change. 
And in that journey, you need to find fear for the change because as human beings, we are too attracted to the familiar. No matter how uncomfortable the familiar is, it's something that the threshold of change has to be very, very, very high before the human being can quickly adjust to it. Otherwise, as much as possible, we hold on to the familiar, we cling to the familiar, we want to do everything we can to make it look exactly the way it has been. And that is the reason why every little success that comes along your way, you must celebrate it. It gives fuel for the journey. It helps you to convert the undecided. It weakens the resistance of the opposition. You don't have to wait until the whole hog is done before you start to celebrate. If the first thing is to replace an equipment and then the next thing is to uh, do the tests running and then launch the new product and then hire the people, for every little, little milestone that you are able to check, that you are able to achieve as planned, use it as, a, as an opportunity to celebrate. It, it makes your change agent feel good. It makes the rank and file want to identify. And it weakens the rank and file of the resistor. Because all of a sudden, it sends out the message that the train is moving, the train has left the stop, and it's beginning to build momentum. And then you decide whether you want to be on board or you want to be off board. So, find every opportunity to celebrate. It is the fuel for that change management journey. And last but not the least is the fact that you then need to continuously review, revise, and improve on whatever you are trying to change. Why am I building this here right now? I said it in the introductory video. If you want to remain on top of the game, if you want to stay alive, if you want to, do, to be relevant, change will not be a one-off thing. Because as you will, will find in the Who Moved My Cheese that we will, be, we will soon be talking about, one of, the, one of the conclusions of that book is you need to change often. Keep, keep smelling the cheese. Don't do it one time and throw away your skill and think of that at the end. Because the rate at which change is happening is at, in this our world is at, the, is at the rate of the blink of an eye. No matter what you're doing, what you think you have, the, amount, the kind of advantage you have, if you're not careful, one event can blow it away. So, the seventh and the last, but certainly not the least, is that you need to keep evaluating. You need to keep checking. You need to keep finding a way of how do we improve it? How do we do it differently? And the more attuned and accustomed your system gets to change and change management, the easier it is for you to keep evolving and responding to environment which permanently assures the fact that you will not one day grow up and become extinct. All right. So this is where I'd like to land for this week and then bring closure to the seven-step process in change management. The change conversation is not done. We will continue next week to then focus on how it affects people and the other things you need to know from the entrepreneurial standpoint before we then get to the individual side. 2019 is starting. Before you know it, if Jesus tarries, it will soon be December. If you do not want the same story that ended 2018 to be the same story in 2019, or if you want a better success than what you achieved in 2018, now is the time to get going. And we wish you all the best and we'll be here waiting for you for anything and in any way we may be able to help you so that very soon you too can be living your dream. On behalf of the team, I say thank you for being here. Let's make it a date every week this year. And whatever you do, please don't ever forget that Team Mark is still my name. And yes, all I'm trying to do is what? Make it into difference. So I see you next week. Thanks very much and have a very wonderful 2019. Bye.